everybody, we have a great opportunity right now in the Revolutionary War sphere to preserve three different battlefields in three different states and with one famous quote to top it all off. The three battlefields, Fort Anne uh, up in New York, we're talking about Guilford Courthouse in North Carolina, and here, Hobkirk Hill in South Carolina. Now, up at Fort Anne, that's part of the Saratoga campaign, and we have an opportunity to add to some of the land we've already preserved up there. And at Guilford Courthouse, a pretty well-preserved battlefield, we've been slowly working with our partners there locally to get an acre here, an acre there. Here's another opportunity for a small tract, but we have two more tracts that we can preserve here at Hobkirk Hill. Now, we are standing at Camden, South Carolina. There's a big battle at Camden. Wait, why are you talking about Hobkirk Hill um, when you're really here to talk about the Battle of Camden? Dan Davis, Education Manager, help us out. Thanks, Gary. So there's two battles here at Camden during the American Revolution. The first takes place in August of 1780 when Lord Charles Cornwallis' army completely routes Major General Horatio Gates' Continental Army off the field. This is going to lead to Gates' removal. He'll be replaced by Major General Nathaniel Green, who will take command in December of 1780. And one of the first things that Green does is send Daniel Morgan in a flying army into the Carolina backcountry. And there, Morgan will defeat Bannister Tarleton at the Battle of Cowpens in January. And that will initiate a period that is known as the Race to the Dan, where Green engages in a campaign of exhaustion against Cornwallis. He's trying to outrun Cornwallis to get to Virginia, and he succeeds. But then he's going to return to North Carolina, where he will engage Cornwallis at the Battle of Guilford Courthouse in March of 1781. Cornwallis wins a Pyrrhic victory there. However, his army is so devastated, he has to withdraw toward the Atlantic coast to rest and resupply his men. And rather than follow Cornwallis all the way to the sea, Green decides he's going to come back to South Carolina. He's going to initiate a campaign that he calls a war of posts. He's going to go after and target each of the individual British garrisons located throughout the state. The first garrison that Green will target is led here at Camden by Lord Francis Rowden. Green's going to arrive outside of Camden with his main army on April 20th. But he's going to find that the British defenses are too strong for a frontal assault. So he's going to pull back to the area that we're standing in, an area that we have an opportunity to preserve, known as Hobkirk Hill. And he wants the British to come to him. He wants to fight a battle on ground of his own choosing. Green. In this instance, he chooses the high ground, and Rowden obliges him. Five days later, on April 25th, he sallies out of Camden, and he attacks Green here on Hobkirk Hill. The battle starts out going pretty well for Green and his army, but losses in his officer corps, as well as poorly conceived and executed orders, is going to cause the American line to crumble. But Green is able to get his men off the field, extricate his men from a very nasty situation, and live to fight another day. He successfully disengages from the British and withdraws to the north. It is a few days after this battle that he will famously write, we fight, get beat, rise, and fight again. Nathaniel Green is going to lose more battles in the south than he wins, and that quote perfectly encapsulates the southern campaign in 1781. Gary? Thanks, Dan. I've even read, too, that some of the British were even saying, you know, every time we beat Nathaniel Green, we lose territory, and that ends up being true. This is a fascinating story, and it's just part of the story. We have got land up in New York and at North Carolina and here at Hobkirk Hill to preserve 64 acres of more than 40 to 1 match. We hope you'll get involved and you'll click the link associated with this video, and let's end with a pan showing you a little bit more of sunny Hobkirk Hill.